Listen, man, apparently this is why my team can never win a championship. I'm in the NBA. This is an NBA Finals closeout game at home. Are you kidding? I'm taking them versus the field. They're on a completely different level. Went wrong oh. for Boston. They were so soft in this game. The Boston Celtics have elevated, as far as I'm concerned, to the favorite to win it all. Bitch! The Celtics <laughs> did it again. Another trade that's supposed to win them a championship, but that's part of a problem that we've been seeing for years uh -oh. that's kept them from actually winning. You might think that's crazy. I mean, the Celtics just got Kristaps Porzingis. Tingus, Tingus. Yeah. Three oh, now, now we like Porzingis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking did. Tingus, Tingus. Oh, right. oh, the irony. Oh, yeah. my lord. Hey, I wasn't, I wasn't old to really talk about it, man. But we got Tingus, Tingus. Oh, my lord. No, the fuck. Ah, YKD. As a, <laughs> Alright, that was funny. As a nigga from DC, man, y'all are fake as hell. And I see what people talk about when the Lakers fans do it, because y'all fake as shit. Y'all weren't talking about no damn KP in any conversation ever. And now you get them, and it's like, oh yeah, we're good, let's go, let's go, man. That shit, I'm not saying it couldn't go right, but man, y'all fake loving KP, oh, Okay, bro. okay, Jared Vanderbilt. That's oh, Vando Vando. Jared, oh, we got Jared Vando. That's Vando Vando. He worked. Right, you seen that film? He worked. He right, worked. Man. That's Vando Vando. Should have got more minutes in the series. He might not have got fucking broomed. I don't give a fuck about his shooting. Lock up. All, all, all that fake love y'all shown to D-Lo till he choked. All right, That's man. Nah, nah, nah. That nah, wasn't fake love. That, that, okay. Those are what we call LeBron fans. <laughs> that wasn't fake <laughs> love. That wasn't fake love. I still love, bro. But the issue with the Celtics was never talent or roster. I'm about to talk about the not-so-obvious behind-the-scenes that ruined the Celtics each year. Because uh -oh. they this, continue this to is crazy build a team. Hey, I'm about to culture. say. And no, I'm not saying don't MJ ever said, trade hey, players, bro. but the amount of shopping around the Celtics do to then not trade said players is also ridiculous. The original trade that was proposed involved Brogdon instead of Marcus Smart. And now you done trade Marcus Smart, who has over and over again been undoubtedly the heart and soul of the yeah. oh, man. Yeah. Not Marcus! The Marcus Smart! The heart and soul! Players like disposable assets, when their feelings and mental state are crucial to the success of the team. And it's not just a role play. I see Despite the chain. The Celtics being <laughs> <laughs> title favorites for several years they haven't been able to put it together but why just this past season the celtics were building a trade package for kevin durant and what including happened jalen brown jalen was so confused on where he stood with the team that he had a three-way call with tatum and president brad stevens and still came out confused what? damn to understand why a sense of stability is so important look no further than jamal murray who after tearing his ac thought he was getting traded but instead the Nuggets organization assured him that he's here to say Jokic stood behind him and now he's an NBA uh, champion that put up 30 point triple doubles in the finals and this isn't the only time oh, oh yeah let's talk about it uh, let's talk about it we'll cover in detail but you niggas man 2017 was hell so dark they should have been punished what punished that's what Call, boy, MJ. remember Isaiah Thomas the unprobable 5'9 star of the Celtics averaging 20 yeah. points a game in 2017 My guy, who played in the yeah, playoffs is he? The day after his sister passed away, what the Celtics did to him was damn near unforgivable. In the oh. 2017 ah. playoffs, Isaiah oh. Thomas had a significant hip injury, yet continued to play, carrying the Celtics to the Eastern Conference Finals, putting up a 53-point game. He was set up for his first big contract next season, and the Celtics didn't want to pay him. So they got the most out of him by playing him through a hip injury that would eventually ruin his career. He just never fully recovered back to what he was doing. Thomas all but confirmed it when he responds to the Celtics forcing another player to play through injury with heard that before lol. Oh fact, man. The long term implications of his injury were never revealed to him. What the f Thomas never returned okay, to his that is, that is form, I'm not, I'm not Yeah y'all niggas uh, y'all a hell bro. For Kyrie Irving. That's what loyalty what putting it all on the line for the Celtics organization means now. Even
All right, but but this is my thing though. I th- I think the Celtics definitely did him dirty by not telling him like the full extent of his injury. I'm I'm not debating that. But at that point in time though, I feel like the Celtics were in a lose lose situation. We either give this injured dude who even when healthy is a defensive liability, arguably the worst defensive player of all time, a super max, or or we get clowned on on passing up on like a superstar trade deal, which actually ended up happening with Kyrie. So I don't know, man. Hey, man, it wasn't stupid. I don't think anybody said it was technically stupid. It, I mean, hindsight would only be the uh, argument for that. But ultimately, bro, y'all are just assholes. Y'all dicks. Like, what, like, what's wrong with y'all, man? Pay the man, bro. He did all that for y'all, and y'all can't even have him in your jersey? You couldn't even have had IT decline an offer and explain why you lowballing him? You just trade the man? The Cleveland? For Kyrie. The Cleveland. Ah, bro, 25-year-old up-and-coming superstar out there in the trade market just like that. Y'all had IT who was an up-and-coming superstar, essentially. Bro average right. 29 out of nowhere. Could have had more of that. But no, you lied to him about his hip, and you packed him up the second you could. When, when his stock was high, you traded him. Y'all are bad people. These Celtics locker room problems were blamed on Kyrie Irving, but why did the problems continue to this day? Uh-oh. The answer is in plain sight, but so many missed it. Kemba Walker, another star point guard, was pissed off with the Celtics culture in 2021, believing that they didn't want him around long term. And if one of your key guys is thinking that, how do you think that's affecting the mood of the team? Of course, when these Celtics are winning, everything seems good, like most teams. But even the constant trade rumors ruin that flow. Yet when the Celtics are losing, it becomes an internal blame game and who's getting trade first vibes. In the past decade, That's the anything. Celtics have never stood behind a player, whether it's been with Danny Ainge as president or Brad Stevens, and it's cost the team everything. That I'm gonna outline and show the receipt, starting with trying to trade Jason Tatum after his rookie year, in which he had just averaged 18.5 points in the playoffs helping lead the Celtics to the yes, Eastern like Conference Finals MJ, without it. Kyrie. Yep. Tatum was in several antiquated packages Boston. that never panned out. Jalen Brown has constantly been in trade rumors his whole career on the Celtics. From the earlier mentioned Katie trade package to Anthony Davis to Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons? <laughs> would be passed around <laughs> like that? Are you serious right now, bro? Even role players like Juan Hernan Gomez did not like playing for the Celtics, stating, I wasn't happy there. It was very hard. There was no communication. I didn't know what was expected of me. There were many super selfish players. No team built. I lost Damn. my love for basketball a bit. When you got bone not wanting to play, you messed up. Ole, bitch. And that was in 2021, <laughs> the same season the Celtics would make the finals. And he's not the only one. I made it 22. Team Terry Rozier said, I just haven't had that much fun. Marcus Morris even said, The one thing we're missing is enjoying the game. With multiple players coming forward and speaking about their time on the Celtics as shit, I think Let's it's talk about say, the, the constant Celtics Jason Tatum. Toxic. I mean, they ain't even getting along with. I, I will say, I think the, the main thing is they fucked up with that whole that that Kyrie era where they they got Jalen Brown to have Jason Tatum to have these two young stars but then they were also trying to win now because of you know what Isaiah Thomas and now Horford built so now you have this situation where you're trying to win now you have stars that are trying to win a championship right now but then you have these young players trying to make a name for themselves and in my opinion that's just that's that that has never been a good plan for any team that's why i was so against like portland trying to keep dame and scoot like yo bro just, just pick a direction and i think everything that's transpired for the celtics over the last couple of years when it comes to trade rumors is a product of that era where they just can't decide if they're trying to win now or build around this core um or build around this young duo that they have with jason tatum and jalen brown but also they're in a position where like yo they can compete right now with Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. It's it's just a whole mess. It, it really is, man. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, bro. It, it's kind of pathetic because people really treat 
uh, the NBA like it's fucking 2K. I know I make my 2K jokes all the time, but those are jokes for a reason. I'm not actually thinking that I would just come here and dolo the uh, NBA if I were a GM, right? Like, the idea that you could uh, have your cake and eat it, too, I think that's the expression, is pretty uh, corny sometimes because you're not factoring the player mentality behind it. Essentially, if you're a young star guy like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, yeah, Kyrie young, too, so ideally that's cool, but, like, Kyrie's was an established name at that point in time. Nobody knows who I am. People are talking about trading me for AD. People are talking about trading me for Kawhi, stuff like that. And if you're Boston, you got to know that them players know that they're getting talked about. And as a result, they're going to play like, hey, yo, don't don't trade me. Trade that nigga. And the other bro- nigga going to be like, don't trade me. Trade that nigga. So as a result, it did get a little selfish, but that's just a matter of like, I, I don't think it was unwarranted selfishness, if that makes sense. When all along, if you're Boston, you either do two things. You either, hey, I ain't going to lie, y'all actually do got to go. It's not your fault, but you actually do got to go. Or you just never pulled the trigger on Kyrie. It was a nice attempt. We never know what could have happened because in hindsight, Gordon Hayward stays healthy. Who who knows? But it is what it is. It was an attempt, and we've seen the flaws of said attempt for sure. You know how when you, when the Lakers got LeBron, y'all still had like the baby Lakers on the squad. Oh, you're talking about the first year when we had yeah, like, yeah. like yeah, imagine oh, yeah. imagine if y'all played that out for like I don't know three more years, right? And y'all actually won with that squad, but every single year it was like okay, but they're like one missing piece away. If you're the Los Angeles Lakers and motherfuckers like AD, KD, Dame are on the market, yo, do, do y'all want Lonzo? Do y'all want Brandon Ingram? <laughs> And I think it would be a similar situation, which, again, that that's why I, I was never and still am in the position of, like, trying to position yourself for, like, a five to eight year time span. Yo, bro, this is my whole thing with the Celtics right now. There's a championship window right now. Yep. Right now. We made it to the finals in 2022. We made it to the Eastern Conference Finals Game 7 the year after. Stop trying to play this. Ah, but would you rather have a championship window for the next seven nah, let us years? Talk. We're pushing that agenda. Or or would you only want to have it for three years? I'd only honestly rather have it for three years, bro. Maximize these next three years that you got, right? With with a with a top ten player in the league. And and, and that's it, bro. Like mm-hmm. all, all we need is one. We've milked the fuck out of that oh wait ring. Just give us, we don't, we don't need three rings. It's about to be rings. 20 years since 08, y'all. That, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Four. We are coming up on 20 years since 08. And clearly, we didn't need 10 championships to gas that shit up, bro. Fuck, fuck a 10-year championship window. Just give me one. Please. Please. Hey, no. I, I have to continue my gaslighting. Keep JB. Shout out to the re- shout out to the extension. Shout out to the uh, oh, sh- <laughs> shout out to the young players on Boston. Shout out to Derek White of the world. Shout out to Grant Williams of the world. Shout out to the Time Lords. Keep all of those guys. Um, yeah, you'll be great. Keep all the picks too. All the picks. But but that's that's my thing too. Is kind of, is like the Celtics are getting penalized right now. If anything, for being too loyal to Jalen Brown. But if we trade him, it's gonna be another case of. Man, Jalen Brown did all all this for y'all, and y'all are just gonna trade him. Yeah, yeah. The um, NBA streets is a lose lose. You, I, I thought it was. I thought Twitter was collectively trolling, but nah. Some people are actually upset about the Dame thing. I'm y- yes. I, I am confusion. It's been like five years. We begging him to leave, and now we're like, yeah, I lost a role model today. Man, what? Y'all are. <laughs> Y'all are corny. Y'all are corny. And you could say the culture starts with the players who lead the locker room. But at one point, that was Kyrie and Hayward, which creates several problems. Then it was Tam and Brown. At what point are we going to look at the dysfunction as a result of the front office's ineptitude? Brad Stevens lost the team when he showed favoritism to Gordon Hayward, who he coached in college, giving him extra minutes as he returned from injury while taking it away from Tatum and Brown and the rest of the players. Only to lose Hayward in free agency a few years later. It was so bad that a Celtics player told Blake Griffin to not come because of the dysfunction. Damn. Al Horford called out the Celtics in 2021 saying, individually, we need to look in the mirror. Brown just said, searching and looking in the mirror? Nah, no comment. And the front office, the coaches Damn. all let that happen unchecked. Rather, Danny Ainge even called out the players defending Brad Stevens saying Is that a blue yeti? responsibility <laughs> when <laughs> players improvise and are playing with lack of emotion. Oh my god, no, no. Oh, he broke wow. it. Oh, he sucks. Comment, bro. Shut your stupid ass. Oh.
Heck, just this past playoffs, Joe Mazzula, their current head coach, admitted there was a disconnect with the rest of the players. Hey. Marcus Smart even agreed, saying that Joe should receive the media's criticism. But all this can be traced to one league-altering trade. When the Celtics trade away Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett. W gaslighting. Yeah, you can't blame him for that, man. W gaslighting, let's go. This let's is talk crazy. about it. Let's talk about it. Since then, the Celtics have always been in the mix to trade for star talent, mainly because they have all the assets. And since then, players have only been looked as assets. And the players still have on their logo. Why do you think no one stepped up? There. The only Celtic to speak <laughs> up was Kevin Garnett. You know, the remnants of when the Celtics actually had spirit. Throughout the years, we've oh seen God. inconsistencies. <laughs> Reports that the right, Celtics Kevin players Lark. just don't care. But I care, and I'm just trying to have some real discussion with y'all and give you dope stories. So subscribe if you like that. Marcus Smart was the heart and soul of the team. The glue guy that Traitor. defensively made several lineups work. You can hate his flopping. <sighs> But you can't hate how he could be a viable defender in multiple situations, allowing the Celtics to ultra switch. And you better hope that Jason Tatum becomes a better playmaker and Dylan Brown can finally dribble with his left. But oh, that man. sense of urgency, the <laughs> sense of effort, the way Marcus Smart would be on guys on court to bring the energy isn't something that's just replaced. But more importantly, the Celtics need to make the players feel like this is a community, a brotherhood. Because otherwise... Hello? Looks like They're it right there, man. I don't, I don't know. Pieces, <laughs> nah, that's just a celebration. I don't know, man. I mean, it looked look like a brother right that's there, just man. A it looked like a brother at this year, man. Celebration for the cameras. We just, we just got all played by the Heat, man. I, I ain't gonna lie. I don't know. It's just conflicting to me because literally every single year, it's like. Yeah, the, the Celtics, they need to make some drastic changes, man. We need to make some drastic changes. They actually make those drastic changes, and now, like, uh, no loyalty. It's no loyalty, man. Lo loyalty is overrated, as we see. Both of these players, everybody's running from the grind now. We lost Dame. Everybody runs from the grind. And then now these goddamn owners, they, they just don't care about any player that doesn't run from the grind. You're all trash. All of you. You suck. But it's all right, though. Um, heat in five. Oh my God, the smelly ass heat team, bro. <laughs> they about to, that that they not about to smell. <laughs> they not about to smell real soon when they get Dane. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the actual Dane time on the screen, and they get to keep Bam and Jimmy. They about to get that nigga for Tyler Hero. Fuck. Oh uh, man, I I got some shit to say about them, but that's for a different video. That's for a stream, right? <laughs> oh man, all right, man. Uh, shout out to MJ for the video, man. Um, yeah, the, the franchise is definitely not perfect. Our fan base is definitely uh, yeah, it could be problematic. I ain't even trying to you know cope or anything. We got some problems. <laughs> we, we we got some issues. <laughs> Um, uh, uh, shout out to Tatum, man. That that's it, man. You you shout are the rock. To Ta He's the you, one constant. You, Tatum, it's his problem. You are the rock of this team. He's the toxic orb. <laughs> At this point, bro, you are untradeable. You need to set the tone, bro. You need to make the culture. God Trade damn it. Tatum. Oh shit! All right, man. We'll catch y'all on the next one. Peace.